let's begin with a very interesting story. A boy heard his mother ask him for salt from a neighbour next door. The boy knew that they had some salt at home, so then he asked his mother why she was asking for more. The mother replied, the neighbour doesn't have much money and they sometimes ask us for things. So I asked them for something small that wouldn't burden them. I want them to feel as if we needed them as well. That way, it'll be much more easier for them to ask us for anything in the future since they know that it's okay to ask for help. Hello and Assalamu Alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. This story illustrates the inevitable impact of the prolonged lockdown measures implemented in Malaysia. Unfortunately, the situation is further aggravated as those who bear the brunt of this drastic change are likely to suffer from severe depression, which could ultimately lead to suicide. In the long run, this may affect the country, as a nation's well-being is the sum of individuals and families' well-being. Interestingly, some see the pandemic as a blessing in disguise. While many are suffering in these trying times, can we still see the good that COVID-19 pandemic brings? Is there a silver lining after all? First and foremost, based on our research, we discovered that our society has become more understanding and empathetic. One of the major impacts of COVID-19 is severe depression, which could ultimately lead to suicide. Suicide cases have recorded a spike earlier this year, according to the data collected by the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM. This is a worrying trend as depression and suicide directly manifest how the mental well-being of our nation is hurting. Previously, people who suffered from depression and harbored suicidal tendencies were judged unfairly. We assume that these people were deserving of blame for their inability to work hard enough in order to overcome and survive adversity in life. Due to this, we shut them out and refused to empathize with them as they had already given up on life. There was a huge increase in the number of calls made to the emotional support helplines such as Befriendus KL from January to June this year compared to 2020. If we compare the number of calls within the same period of March to June, we can see that the amount of calls is higher for 2021. Similar trends appear in the statistics from Talent Kasih. However, the surge in the number of calls made to these helplines should be viewed from an optimistic standpoint. We should be grateful that more people became aware of how to seek help and most importantly, this is an indication of a positive change in the society as more people suffering from depression can be helped. Unlike before, our society has now become more sensitive, receptive and empathetic towards those who suffer from depression. This is further evidence in the growing number of individuals volunteering to help via Befriendus and Delicacy. We believe that the awareness will have a long-lasting impact where people who need help will use these services to improve their mental well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, the society has changed how to perceive suicidal individuals and this has become the impetus in decriminalizing suicide. The rising suicide statistic that we stated before is already a worrying trend. What's even sadder is that suicide attempts are treated as crimes, even though suicide is a result of serious mental health issues. This is because under Section 309 of the Penal Code, which was enacted during colonial rule in 1936, attempting suicide as a crime in Malaysia. Thankfully, we have now realized that the policy of criminalizing suicide is inhumane and ineffective. A number of countries that had adopted similar colonial laws such as Singapore and Sri Lanka have since repealed the law or of course, modified versions of it. Many ASEAN countries, including Indonesia, do not even consider suicide a crime. Malaysia, however, has not yet followed suit. Nevertheless, People are becoming aware of both of these issues. Some of them re-evaluated their stance and subsequently, their views changed too. Instead of seeing those who attempted suicide as criminals who need deterrence from punishments, 
they now view them as victims who need help instead. So we believe that more Malaysians are becoming compassionate towards them. This is exemplified by grassroots movements like the Decriminalise Suicide Now campaign which sought to repeal Section 309. It is an online petition and has gained widespread support. It is set on track to reach a goal of 20,000 signatures. While we sincerely hope that their efforts, and others too, will bear fruits in the form of legislative change. Abolishing the law will allow these people to be taken care of using rehabilitative principles and a medical-based approach that treats mental health issues in a way that creates tangible outcomes. Another positive change in the society is we have become more compassionate and helpful. If you've paid attention to our community throughout the pandemic, you could see some positive changes. We had started to change our perceptions like how people have started realising that there's nothing wrong with underprivileged people asking for help. What's more is that some of us have voluntarily provided help to them instead of waiting for welfare agencies to come to their aid. During the pandemic, many found themselves in precarious situation. Consequently, the community began to notice and decided to help them by initiating the white flag movement. For the movement, in essence, people who needed help would raise a white flag at their homes and other people could provide them with necessities. Other than that, applications like Sambal SOS and Kita Jaga were created in order to coordinate this movement. The sheer number of people who volunteered and participated shows the widespread support of this movement in our society. Simply put, this is an initiative by the people and for the people. Help for underprivileged comes in other ways as well. Now, food banks are commonplace in public spaces. The idea of having a food bank at petrol stations, for example, creates awareness in our society that there is help provided for those who are in need. All in all, having a society that provides mutual aid improves our collective well-being and strengthens our solidarity as people. We can see a change in our society when people find no problem in asking for help and becoming receptive to it. Prior to this situation, we wrongly believed that waving a white flag and asking for help would mean giving up or committing a shameful act. Instead, now we regard it as courageous and noble, especially if their family's life is on the line. Individuals from our community started providing help instead of remaining indifferent to their neighbor's condition. This is a positive social impact of COVID-19 that provides us with hope. We believe that everyone watching this video shoulders the responsibility to help anyone in need because we are the agent of change. Inspired by this idea, Revocare was formed. This is a small batch project aiming to help our batchmate who faces stress or depression. We created several posters and pamphlets to promote our mini helpline through our batch telegram and share motivational and positive content via our official Revocare Instagram account. Go check it out at revo.care. We offer them a shoulder to cry on and advise them to be more optimistic in facing their problem. With this, we hope we could help them by being a good listener. As a student, we should be raising awareness to provide emotional support for our struggling friend. Ladies and gentlemen, although COVID-19 has left a huge impact on each and every one of us, we saw many opportunities and proof for a better change to our country. We talked about how perceptions held by Malaysians on a variety of issues have changed and their willingness to provide help to others is a direct manifestation of this change in perception. People began to re-evaluate their stance on mental health issues and use their power as citizens to create a legislative change that will be more clement to the people who have attempted suicide. We are optimistic that these changes will be permanent and finally reform our society to be more kind and compassionate. We hope more individuals will join us in making the changes that we want to see in our society. Would you join us too?